So visually, you have already seen the highlight of my presentation. It would have better gone to the end of the presentation, but uh, content-wise, it would better fit to the beginning. So I started with one. Uh, as the title says it, I want to talk about QR codes versus data matrix codes, and you saw a very impressive one uh, here in this short film from Shanghai. So QR codes are, I would say, basically anyway, if you go with open eyes through the supermarket, uh, then you see uh, everywhere you can download recipes or you can apply for a new job. Uh, uh, anything in, in the supermarket, as I said, the charcoal at, at Aldi uh, carries a data matrix code. <clears throat> but we have them as well on pharmaceutical products. So here you see an example uh, of a buyer product in Australia, where still the paper-based leaflet is inside the box, uh, but uh, in addition there is at the bottom the QR code uh, to access the authority's website uh, and access the uh, paper or access the patient information leaflet in, in electronic PDF format uh, there. We have it as well uh, in the EU for, for a product family uh, where in addition to the data matrix code that you see on the uh, that, 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 that we have here for UFMD serialization, uh, we have uh, as well this QR code that either links to the company website, it, it depends on, uh, on the countries, or it uh, links to the authorities' uh, website. <coughs> and there are other examples. So, uh, in, as part uh, of the uh, fight against COVID vaccine, the IMA granted labeling flexibility for the vaccine manufacturers. And here you see pictures from the Moderna product taken here just down the road in the uh, Corona vaccination center that was operated a kilometer here. Um, and uh, yeah, you see it's on all levels. Yeah, we, we, have the, uh, we have the QR code uh, on the packaging leaflet, we have the QR code on the primary packaging, and we have a QR code, we find a QR code uh, as well on the secondary packaging. So, what is so famous with the QR code? Why are, are companies deciding to use QR and what are the downsides? So the key advantage of the QR code is that it's easy to scan with a smartphone camera, so you don't need a dedicated app. Uh, you just put uh, the smartphone camera on it and it brings you to the website that is encoded in the QR code. And it's increasingly known to consumers, so you can assume that if you put a QR code somewhere, there is at least in a certain uh, age uh, of the people. I mean, my, my mother, she doesn't even have a smartphone, so she will, will never use it. But, but younger people uh, clearly will scan the QR codes. There are clearly as well disadvantages, uh, one of them being that it only points to one fixed web address. Uh, so you can not offer different content there. You have to decide for one particular content. And you have to maintain this web address uh, for the entire shelf life of the product. Uh, which is, uh, if, if you think about that, the product sometimes have a shelf life of five years, you may need to make sure that this website uh, still exists after five years. And with the Australia example, uh, I saw it last year, so I checked it and it worked. Uh, and three weeks later, later, it didn't work any longer. And what was the reason? Yeah, Bayer is reducing IT costs, and there was a web address that only forwarded uh, the request to the authorities' website, and somebody thought, well, that is useless, we can save the money. So they, they did no longer maintain th this link to the authorities' website, and it, and it didn't work uh, any longer. And one other disadvantage is it's a second barcode, or actually it's, it's often a third barcode in, in addition to the ones that are already on the packages. So usually we have, in Europe, we have the 2D data matrix code, often we still have the linear EIN code, and now comes the QR code uh, in addition. But I didn't only want to talk about your QR codes, I wanted to talk about as well about 2D data matrix. Now, what is so famous with 2D data matrix? Well, basically the GS1 family of codes, uh, like the EIN code and the GS1 data matrix code, uh, provide for a de facto for a standard for product identification around the world. 
Yeah, and here on the, uh, on the world map, you see the countries highlighted that either request to use 2D data matrix code or, like in China, allow uh, to use a 2D data matrix code uh, for product identification purposes. And there is similar things that are possible with the QR code are, under certain circumstances, possible as well with the 2D data matrix code. So my first example here is, uh, from Germany, the app uh, developed uh, under, by VFA together with its, the, the German Manufacturer Association, VFA, together with their member companies. The Gebrauchsinformation um, 4.0 or product information uh, 4.0. Um, for the Germans here in the, uh, in the plenary, you can download the app from the app, app store. Uh, and scan this code, and then it, it, it will work. But download is restricted, apparently restricted to the German App Store. So, so if you're a smartphone, at, at least uh, in, in, the, in the Apple Store. So if, if you are linked to a different App Store, I heard it from, from colleagues from other companies, they weren't able uh, to download it. So this is an example where an association uh, offers this dedica dedicated app to scan the code. Another example is from Spain. Um, where it's the authorities themselves uh, who offer this uh, app. SEMA is, is an affiliated company uh, to the authorities. They already have for some years uh, this app that allows to scan linear barcodes, and therefore I've chosen here uh, an example with a linear barcode. Uh, and they are uh, currently planning to extend the, the functionality of this app um, as well uh, to scan 2D data matrix codes. And it's always, all these examples are around accessing product information. The country that, in my opinion, is most advanced is Japan. So the unfortunate thing is uh, Japan does not use, as, as most of you probably know, they neither use uh, EAN codes nor GS1 data matrix. They are using GS1 composite code. <coughs> and uh, it was to be implemented by April uh, this year. And what they have... Uh, developed in, in implementation of a regulation uh, is an app uh, jointly between the, the authorities uh, and the manufacturer association because as of uh, now, as of August this year, it's required that manufacturers provide the leaflets in electronic format. Uh, and as of August 2023, so within two years, um, it's allowed to take out the paper-based pills uh, from the packages, uh, and they will fully rely uh, on uh, access uh, to the product information via electronic means. So, we see the QR code. Yeah, <coughs> uh, what, what are now uh, uh, the advantages uh, of the GS1 data matrix? Clearly, uh, EIN or data matrix, they are anyway on the product for product identification uh, purposes. So, it would, of course, be a bright idea to use this code as well for other purposes. Uh, the downside uh, is it requires a dedicated app, and this won't go away, I believe. At least I don't see anybody who has an idea um, who, how this could, ha could happen. There are some uh, talks between GS1 and, and uh, Apple and Google uh, to implement a certain functionality uh, in the smartphone operating systems, but this will not, and it will help a certain, uh, to a certain extent, but the need for a dedicated app uh, will not go away, go, go away. And secondly, consumers are, are not used to scan EIN codes and 2D data matrix code other than the QR code. So if one uh, would go and say, okay, let's, uh, let's rely on these codes, uh, then it requires much more education of those who shall access uh, the information. So we have the two alternatives, huh? and the question is now, yeah, which way uh, should we go? And uh, that's maybe discussed as well in your companies, at least at Bayer, it's intensively discussed, and there are many people and many opinions and clearly then uh, different uh, and uh, opposing uh, opinions, which in a company that wants to standardize things is, of course, not a good idea. So what we did is um, we, 
we thought about what could be the buyer way uh, to, to move forward. And what we did there is we, we, we rely on a position that was developed in the GS1 community uh, and, and uh, in, the, in the GS1 healthcare community. Um, and so we say for product identification purposes, the, either the linear EIN code or the GS1 data matrix code, they are the data carriers of choice and the QR code should not be used. And that's uh, for us a very important state, statement in particular in the direction of regulatory because we see that in the one or the other country authorities are starting to think about whether it wouldn't be a bright idea to use QR code um, for product identification purposes. If one looks in detail, then it reveals that it would not provide any benefit comp uh, compared to the GS1 data matrix code. But neither the authorities nor the, uh, uh, the colleagues from regulatory inside the company are technical experts in that area and can have a proper discussion. And therefore, it helps our regulatory people uh, that they know there is a position at Bayer and they know uh, whom to ask if they need uh, further information. So if they are um, approached with this idea about using QR code for product identification purposes, they can come to me or my colleagues and we will explain them why they shouldn't do it. So then, then we have GS1 data matrix, but this, is there a role of QR inside Bayer? Yes, there is one. Uh, and the, the role of uh, QR comes from the, from the use case accessing product information. So we say uh, we see the need to ease uh, the access uh, to product information, and this should be either achieved via a dedicated uh, app using the existing uh, GS1 data matrix or linear barcode, but as we know, that it is uh, not, we cannot expect that in each country we will have very soon uh, somebody like VFA in Germany or the Spanish authorities who de will develop uh, such app. We say, okay, the QR code is acceptable to access electronic product information, but always uh, only in addition to the one for product identification purposes. And what, what the uh, colleagues in regulatory then as well need to understand. Uh, supply chain wants to go for multi-market packs uh, because, because the, the volumes, we heard it in several talks today, volumes uh, are going down in a specialized uh, medicine or cell and gene therapy, so we want to use multi-country packs, but the QR code only points to one address. Uh, so how do you want to achieve that if this is a multi-country pack for, and, and we have very language-wise, very weird, um, ideas about uh, coupling uh, Spain, France, and Poland, yeah? and you have one website, so in which language are you going to present it? Overall, this ends up then here in such a table where we say, okay, we need to distinguish the product, uh, the barcoding for product identification purposes and for accessing electronic product information, and we say, okay, we have either static coding yeah? and uh, there are still countries where, where we do not, do not even have linear EIN codes on the packages, and, and we say, okay, that's, that's clearly not very modern not to have anything, so this should be avoided. At least there should be a linear um, EIN barcode, yeah? or if, if the country is more advanced uh, and, and there is some stakeholder agreement in the countries, then it should be a, a 2D data matrix code, either with JIT and batch and expiry, uh, or as well serialized if a traceability system uh, is, present, uh, is, is present in the country. And on the primary packaging, uh, we say, okay, it, uh, everything is acceptable from no barcode, as it's on, on most of our products uh, today, a linear barcode would be feasible, is, uh, would be acceptable, but is only feasible if the, if the primary packaging is very large because the linear barcodes are uh, pretty space consuming. So, so it should be, uh, often it should be a 2D data matrix uh, code. Um, variable coding, yes, would be, uh, would, would be an option, but clearly our packaging lines are today not equipped um, to, to print variable data uh, on a, 
uh, on a primary packaging. And very clearly, and that's as well a message then to, to my colleagues from regulatory, uh, not, to, not to enter into serialization for primary packaging, uh, at least not in the countries where secondary packaging exists. Clearly, uh, if, 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 the, if, like in the US, the primary packaging is the sales item, then, then clearly it, it, it needs to be serialized. But things like we can read it from Canada, from the GS1 Canada roadmap, who say uh, we, are, we want to have uh, serialization as well the, for, for the primary packaging uh, and have no idea uh, what they want to do it. And, and the simple argument is we want to get what others already have, uh, but we don't what they don't say is uh, they don't know what to do with it. So we clearly say engage for not getting primary packaging uh, serialized uh, if, if, this, uh, if a secondary packaging exists. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then for accessing electronic product information, uh, it, it could be a QR code. So I, I already touched the topic, but here quickly to summarize, why is the QR code needed at all? So it's for patient safety because easing the access to product information uh, and, and allowing to access uh, the information in a structured format uh, will help uh, that patients and healthcare professionals make more use of the product information. Um, and uh, I mean, I know it from home. Yeah, so my wife, uh, my kids, yeah, if, if we get a medicine, the first thing that is thrown away is the leaflet. Now, that's not the idea. Um, and, and we had it in the first presentation uh, on, on uh, Pharma Ledger this morning. This was as well an argument yeah, to get, get rid, uh, to, to see all these, these long leaflets. So, so easing the access uh, is imp uh, important. Uh, likewise, uh, and, and we saw this as well in the Pharma Ledger use case, if we have uh, critical product information updates, then it's good that via accessing a code, this can be provided real time, so, so that the healthcare professional or the patient always accesses uh, the most recent information. And waste reduction is another argument that we as well saw. Uh, so, so in that sense, uh, there seems to be a common understanding why I would say why, why electronic product information uh, is, uh, is valuable. So, um, and that's, that's the final remark. So you could say, okay, but there, there are these examples from Spain, from Germany, from Japan. So they, they don't all, all don't use QR. So is it really necessary uh, to use QR? And I see, yes, it is because from what I know from the colleagues from VFA, it has been really a challenge to get this project running, and it took years. And therefore, we can assume that in many countries this won't happen. So if we think we can rely on accessing uh, product, electronic product information via dedicated apps, it will not become available for many years in many countries. Uh, and therefore, I say, yeah, if, if we want to do that and the benefits are there, then there is no other way as, uh, than really as well uh, to allow for QR codes. So, that's, I'm in the end of my presentation and the question uh, in the beginning was, is the QR code the death of the 2D data matrix code? And I believe no, it isn't. I would say the QR code is the child uh, that is keen to enter into new adventures and that will definitely grow over time, but it will not kill its parents. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
why we don't do it is that this is no longer supported by GS1. So if you read the GS1 general specification, the 2021 version, then GS1 themselves says this is an outdated concept that is still acceptable, but nobody should use it for any uh, new applications. Uh, but the less formal and more important uh, reason why we don't uh, do that is it would increase the size of the data matrix code. Uh, and with the print heads uh, that we have in our packaging lines, we can uh, print uh, codes up to a size of 11 or 12 millimeters. And if we would add this additional information, uh, then either the data matrix code would become bigger which we, where on small packages we don't have the space at all. On larger packages we would have to invest uh, into additional uh, equipment to print with uh, two print heads. Or the other way to do it would be to reduce the module size <coughs> um, to, to, uh, to, to get it printed with one, uh, um, with one print head. But this would come with a disadvantage that it's more difficult to scan in the to reliably scan in the, in the supply chain, and then we can expect that, that in the pharmacies, pharmacies we, we would see challenges in scanning it. And I mean, that's the, the even more important goal for us to get EU FMD or the other track and trace regulations running in the pharmacies. So, so uh, that would be counterproductive if we make it more difficult for the pharmacists uh, to scan the PICs. Craig? Not disagreeing with anything you said, Chef, and I, I agree with all of that, but an important an additional thing to mention is the other downside in addition to increasing the size of the data matrix is that it, the, the URL remains a static pointer to some website. And if you want to use that information in a different way, it's a lot easier to make a software update to an app than it is to change the packing artwork or the barcode on a, mm -hmm. on a product. So that's one further disadvantage to hard coding the, yeah. the URL in, in any kind of a barcode, whether it's a QR or a data matrix, is yeah. just to keep in mind. Keeping in mind what you pointed out, that for, for some areas of the world where it's not to be expected that apps will be developed to, to do the resolution and redirect anytime soon, but in applications where it is the case where based on one combination of GTIN, serial number, lot batch, and expiry, in some cases, you might want to use that for an electronic patient leaflet. In other cases, you might want to leverage that for verification of saleable returns. It's a lot easier to do that based on options within an app so that you're not fixed on, on one, one uh, static URL pointer. Right, if you have an app. If you, and, and I mean, if you have the QR, then, then you have, don't have an app. But I mean, you know better than I the, 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 the uh, best choice would probably then use to use GS1 digital link and actually I wanted to uh, to refer to your presentation but unfortunately you didn't talk about digital link today and therefore it didn't make sense uh, you, you just mentioned it once but but it did, then didn't make sense to 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 link my presentation to yours okay thank you very much Stefan thank you well done